Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Robert. <laughs> Good morning, Tom. We're in the middle of uh, the, uh, what I think of as a he the Haygate estate, which was uh, uh, a triumphalist piece of re uh, re redevelopment um, from the, uh, the late 1960s, um, which uh, has been completely removed uh, and uh, rebuilt in the last 10 years or so. The, the original design was described as Corbusian and neo-brutalist. Do you think that's fair? It was pretty brutal. Um, what was good about it were the, the, the homes, which were built to uh, very good s space standards. Uh, and the other point was that uh, it was 100% social of housing in an area of great housing need. The, the, the layout, it somewhat reminds me of the designs for the biker in Newcastle, which only had a wall protecting lower rise housing and Robin Hood Gardens in London which was only high rise but it protected an enclave in the same way that the old Haygate estate did. Robin Hood Gardens was medium rise it wasn't high rise like the yeah. high rise That's develop true. That's true. developments here. Uh, it, they, they didn't re relate to the areas around uh, and particularly uh, uh, the, the main roads, which That's were shopping, right. shopping yeah. streets. It was like so a the, fortress. So the uh, the New Kent Road and uh, the Walworth Road originally were shopping streets. This is Elephant Castle, which was the shopping centre in 19th, well, early pre pre war, pre Second World War, uh, South London, the great uh, centre of uh, the uh, South London tramway network. Marvellous uh, communications. The, the architect for the scheme was. Tim Tinker, who was the lead architect with presumably with Southwark Council Architects Department, and the landscape architect was Michael Brown, who was a real star of housing projects in London at the time. Not, not presumably Southwark Council, it was Southwark Council, I can remember it being built, and I can remember uh, Michael Brown's uh, packing in his uh, plane trees, as he usually did at sort of three and four metre centres. So, so what, what I would say, oh, sorry, what I would say about the original design is that the interior was really good. It was, a, it was as Tim Tinker intended, a calm residential <coughs> enclave. But the the higher blocks, which formed the defensive wall, they were rather brutalist. <coughs> they were extre extremely br brutalist. Mm -hmm. The other point, we've got a pro we've, <coughs> we've both got. A We've both got <coughs> Can I? <coughs> I wonder if there's pollen coming from these yeah, trees. So that was the original and famous Haygate estate, which fell into decay because they didn't spend enough money on it, really. And therefore, Southwark Council decided to knock it over and replace it with perhaps double the density and for the middle class rather than the, the social housing. The problem from the beginning was that it wasn't socially mixed. <laughs> you say it again? It's a, it's a construction site, Tom, mm. so this is bound to happen. That's why we've got knocking okay. in the background. Okay. The, the problem started right at the beginning. It was 100% social housing, so it wasn't mixed. <laughs> there was an absence of shops. There was an absence of mixed development. Exclusively social housing led, thanks very much to Southwark's mismanagement of the estate, their estate, uh, to it being treated as a sink estate, uh, which compounded the, the issues. So what started off as a, uh, a place where people in uh, terraced houses with very poor sanitation received something Full, full, full sanitation, bathrooms, uh, a, a pleasant environment, gradually went downhill in the 1970s and, and 80s. I, I lived very close and could, could see it happening. It wasn't cared for. It's not just a question of building anew, it's also a question of managing it in the long term over what should be uh, the aim of um, not just 40 years and then redevelop, but 100 years or 200 years long-term development, say like um, uh, a lot of 19th century London, 
whether uh, working class terrace housing or Peabody Trust housing, Guinness Trust housing, or going back to the 18th century, the, the great landed estates, Mayfair and uh, Bloomsbury. So, at, at any event, they decided to knock it down. And I'm not sure who did the master plan for the redevelopment. Do you know? I don't. No. But the landscape architects were Gillespie's and they did what was they described as a landscape master plan for it. I, I believe that the architects wanted to remove all of the 400 trees which Michael Brown had planted, but that there was a campaign from local residents and they managed to persuade them to keep one third of the trees, that's 120. And you see them in the background here, and they have been an enormous benefit. Chris I Bain. just wish they'd kept all 400 of them. Chris Baines, the uh, landscape architect, environmentalist, landscape manager, and uh, based in Bir Birmingham, uh, was uh, commissioned to advise on keeping the Michael Brown's trees. And uh, Duncan Goodwin at Greenwich was also working on this in 2013-2014. Well, so if we compare the redevelopment with the original scheme, it seems to me some things are better. Well, firstly, of course, they've got existing trees which weren't here then. Then, I think that they've put much better... Um, it's, it's better architecture than it was before of the blocks, although it's not particularly distinguished. It does have the balconies, which are very welcome, even though they don't satisfy the criteria which we agreed for good balconies. And they've done a good job of the outside of the estate meeting the New Kent Road and <coughs> the A3, I think it is. I, I doubt whether it's better architecture. One is it's safer. They look like fairly uh, thin uh, tower blocks, therefore with one central staircase tower, unlike <coughs> North American practice, where you have at least two t towers in a building, two staircase uh, towers in a, bu a building, and therefore you get the problems of uh, Grendel House at Fire Escape. <coughs> no, I just mean they look better. Uh, I don't know whether they do look better. Okay. You, you particularly don't like concrete. Well, I, I like the brick frontage we're looking at here, for example. And they're not all brick frontage. The brick frontage no. works better, stone yeah. frontage works yeah. better yeah. than yeah. Uh, metal or plastic frontages. <coughs> I'm sorry, I think it's the, the pollen from these trees that's making me cough. Another thing that's good is that they followed Jane Jacobs, essentially, advice, and many others since then, and put in shops and cafes and restaurants, hairdressers, at, at ground level which makes a much better interface with the street I'm the so, previous scheme. I'm so glad now the Elephant Shopping Centre <coughs> has been demolished that the uh, Colombian community at least have got some outlets here uh, because uh, upstairs in the Elephant <coughs> Centre was a huge hub for Colombian shops <coughs> uh, money changers <coughs> and uh, uh, a huge centre for the Colombian community in South London. Um, the design of the park, the Elephant Park, is very good. The, the planting is <coughs> much better than has been normal in London for housing projects. Do you, do you agree with that? No. No, I don't think it's very good by European standards. It's pretty... Well, I, 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 I said London standards, not... <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm applying Western standards. Uh, Fair enough. I don't think it compares with uh, a lot of uh, housing that you'd find, whether social housing or private housing, in, in Germany or in, in Holland. <coughs> um, it's OK. So, what about the sustainability aspects of the, the new project here? Well, that goes back to one, should you keep the existing buildings or not, or should you adapt them and upgrade <coughs> them? Two having decided to demolish, uh, whether you should uh, do what they've done. One, they've made the whole development based on um, ground floor car parking, as I can re read it. What, why have many car, ca cars at all? Uh, you're in the centre of London, you don't need well, a because car. Because it's for the middle classes. You don't need, you don't need a car. 
in central yes, London. It's true. Yeah. Um, I used to regularly do my shopping in, mm. in a super, with a, I, a I, Bromfeet. I a, have a, a car and don't use it in London. Yeah. I only use it for going yeah. outside London. Yeah. It shouldn't be assumed that you need a car in central London. There are lots of New Yorkers who don't learn to drive. Um, also, uh, cycle provision isn't that good. Well, there is a, 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 a TfL cycleway on the New Kent Road. And as I say, which it's, is not that, it's not that good. It's much better than its predecessor, we've which just, I used to cycle on quite often. We've just walked along it. And it's not that good. There, were, there were no cy cyclists. It's it not a, it's a Dutch or Danish standard, it doesn't come, no. Which is a standard that we should be aiming for. Of course. Yeah? That's, of that's course. My, my, my standard. So uh, it's OK. It's not very good in terms of planting. It's an OK park. As I said, um, the, uh, the water feature, which uh, clearly is very, very popular. It's very popular. Uh, reminds me of the uh, Düsseldorf Garden F Festival, Garden Show, in 1982, where there was a far more sophisticated <coughs> water garden, um, far more cleverly placed stones mm -hmm. than, than this fairly crude construction that we see here. But it's OK. You see, it, it's passable. Um, in terms of London development, this is Lend-Lease development, and Lend-Lease are not as good a developer as uh, Argent, who did the King's Cross development. Mm -hmm. My usual criticisms apply, which is that the balconies, although better than what was here before, they're not good enough and don't satisfy our agreed criteria for good balconies. And there's nothing growing on the walls, so we don't have living walls. We don't have a water supply to the balconies. And so far as I can see, the, there's no roof garden or green roof at the top, although the internal courtyards above the car parks, I think they, we can't get into them, but they, they do seem to be decent spaces. And I'm going to resend you my photograph, which shows this area and shows the, the near Georgian 1930s LCC uh, estates to the north, which are far greener. Yeah. Well, they should have kept Michael Brand's 400 trees. I mean, what possible excuse is there for getting rid of 70% of the, the excellent quality plane trees that were growing on the site? Why? How did it happen? More to the point, why remove so much social housing? You've got the figures here. It's gone down from 100% down to, I don't know what. You, well, you, you said that uh, 2,704 new homes, including 82 rented social housing. I think they've actually increased it since then, but it's still obviously low. But it is a strap line, yeah. Tom. Yeah. Get the figures right. Yeah. To the point, we've got a splendid exhibition showing the history of the, the Elephant and Castle. Yes! This development doesn't relate to the Elephant and Castle. It's not contextual. Mm. It's got no music halls. Mm. Or no memory of mu music halls. Or zoological gardens. Or boxing. <laughs> and where's Charlie Chaplin? Or where, or, or, or where are Baldwin's <coughs> herbal stores? And they they what, were knocked down for the, uh, the Haygate estate. Or what about some <coughs> kind of memorial to Charles Babbage, who lived near here and inaugurated the computer age? I mean, it's some great claim to distinction for Elephant and Castle, isn't it? To have given rise mm. to mm. technological world leader. I'm interested to see what happens to the, uh, the, the rebuilt shopping centre and particularly what happens to the, uh, the, the railway station. Well, I can tell you the shopping centre is going to be better than <laughs> the old one. <laughs> the railway station is difficult to use. Very, very steep steps, no, no, no lifts. And is at the centre, it's the uh, Thameslink line, is at the centre of what should be the, the whole development. Not only the, the Haygate estate, sorry, Elephant Park as we should call it now, and the uh, shopping centre to the, to, the, to the north. And uh, the, um, the, the, the railway station at the moment isn't fit for purpose. Okay. The other great sadness about the whole place is that uh, the Cross River tram wasn't built, which would have served this and connected it north and south. Scrapped by Boris Johnson in 2008, yet another of his major, major achievements in life. Well, there's, there's a good note to end on, Robert. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you Tom.
Oh, well, quite early. I thought we were going to be. Well, we can do some more.